a construction site setting with steel beams looming over a concrete perimeter fence and in its center, instead of a lush green pitch, a desolate wasteland. A football stadium skeleton in the suburbs of Douala, still in construction, but which should have been ready to welcome crowds and players for the Afghan 2019 matches. 250 kilometers away, the Olembe Stadium in Yaoundé, where the cup final was to take place, also still just a building site, a mere seven months away from kickoff, an event that Cameroon was finally deprived of hosting, a total debacle against a backdrop of big money. And the one that caught the whiff of scandal, Boris Berthold, a concerned whistleblower whom we interviewed on Skype. It's a huge financial scandal. About 1.8 billion euros have already been paid, already dispersed for the organization of the African Cup of Nations. And it's even more unacceptable that the reason we've been denied hosting rights is because we still lack proper infrastructure. This Cameroonian activist is strongly opposed to the regime and he's currently living in Europe. On his Facebook page, you can see supposedly authentic contract awards and procurement documentation never officially disputed. Tens of billions of CFA francs to overhaul access routes and stadiums. So many deals made via private party agreements. Of all 51 contracts awarded in the build-up to the African Cup of Nations, 41 were agreed between private parties. There were no call for bids. And this type of private agreement obviously suggests that due process was not correctly followed, with contracts negotiated in great haste. It's very hard to imagine that a company involved in building infrastructure for the African Cup of Nations would sign a contract in February 2018 team for a competition that's going to take place the very next year. Also keeping in mind that Cameroon was designated as the host country in 2014. This proves there was a deliberate intention to slow down African Cup of Nations projects in order to directly award contracts to firms belonging to friends. The best example is probably Prime Potomac, a company originally registered in the United States that finds itself in Cameroon trying to raise 40 million euros for its African Cup of Nations construction sites. Prime Potomac, one of the firms allegedly responsible for construction site delays here in Garua, in the north of the Cameroon, which was supposed to overhaul and restore four training stadiums, of which this one. We're currently walking on the playing field and you can see for yourselves that the turf is in good shape. A turf that is clearly drying out in a stadium where the construction firm is organising a raft of press trips in an attempt to defend itself and prove its good faith. The project manager actually had to stop all works here as he had not received all of the billions needed to deliver the stadium in time for the AFCON. If all our current financial problems can be resolved, the minute we get hold of funds, we can pay the workers and sort out the problems that we have obtaining certain materials. And then we guarantee that we can have a fully operational construction site within 30 days. A construction site in dire need of funds. Even if, according to this amendment to the existing contract, Prime Potomac Company was in line to receiving almost 25 billion franc CFAs of public funds, allocated to the dedicated AFCON budget pot. Billions that supposedly never fully reached the company's head office, where the CEO claims he refused to pay any bribes or overcharge on his construction sites. Je vais vous faire une confidence. Nous avons eu des I'll let you in on something. We were pressured by the state of Cameroon into providing addendums to the contracts, increasing the funds allocated to our project. We did not comply, and instead, we tried to cut our costs. To get some form of official response from the government, we asked the Cameroonian Minister of Finance for an interview, but heard no reply. A few days ago, however, in the context of this press conference, we were able to ask him about the AFCON billions. Those who are putting forward these amounts of money, I'll just let them do so. I don't know these figures, but, you know, people tend to say too many things. In my view, what's most important is that ongoing construction work be completed. All the rest is just... Even if 
I believe we'll continue with the task at hand. Work has begun and will continue. Stadiums will be built, hotels will be finished and roads will be completed. Going ahead with construction despite the big 2019 washout. A decision taken by the Cameroon government. A country still supposedly organising the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations and a country, according to a recent World Bank report, where since 2010, massive infrastructure projects have cost two to six times more than similar projects in other comparable developing countries. <laughs>